do not. There is no try. Size matters not. Look at me. Judge me by my size, do you? Hmm? For my ally is the Force. And a powerful ally it is. Life creates it. Makes it grow. <clears throat> its energy surrounds us. And binds us. Luminous beings are we. Not this crude matter. You must feel the force around you. Here, between you, me, the tree, the rock, everywhere. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my video all about Yoda's species on the Mandalorian and in the Star Wars canon because this is taking place right after Return of the Jedi. So a lot of people are wondering if it's going to connect with stuff that's happening during the new trilogy in Rise of Skywalker. I am doing videos for all the Mandalorian episodes, so if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get everything. We're also doing a Star Wars merch giveaway, too. So obviously careful for spoilers from The Mandalorian if you haven't seen it yet. Lucasfilm technically lifted the spoiler ban on talking about Baby Yoda. But that's basically what it was. People were just waiting till after the first couple of weeks to start openly talking about and posting pictures of Baby Yoda. But just to be clear, even though the internet has largely dubbed this person Baby Yoda, we don't know that he is the biological child of Yoda. We don't know that he's a clone of Yoda, but I'll discuss that during the video. So this scene is all about the Mandalorian being saved by the youngling that we're dubbing Baby Yoda. And during a big callback to Yoda, lifting Luke's X-Wing out of the swamp in Empire Strikes Back saves the Mandalorian from being crushed by the Mudhorn creature by lifting it in the air with the Force, then stunning it when it drops to the ground long enough for the Mandalorian to finish him off. Baby Yoda promptly passes out because the effort taxes him so much. You're basically using your life force to do stuff like this, which is why Luke Skywalker died in the attempt to project himself across the galaxy to help give the Resistance time to get away. Baby Yoda is 50 years old, according to what they're saying on the TV show. That makes him around four or five years old in human years, assuming that he ages at about the same rate, but he can't quite talk, so they're playing it kind of fast and loose in terms of how fast he develops relative to other races because he can climb out of his hovering bassinet, he can walk on two legs, he can capture and eat food by himself like we see when he snarfs down that giant frog relative to his size. The frog is almost as big as he is. Then he's also able to tell when the Mandalorian's in trouble. He's able to use the force to sense what's going on with him, even though he himself can't speak yet. The only other two members of his race that we've ever met anywhere in the Star Wars universe in any kind of canon, even the Legends canon, or Yoda himself, who was about 900 years old when he died, then Yaddle, who we last saw during Phantom Menace, and she was a little under 500 years old when that happened. There's a story about what happens to her after this moment, but they killed her off during the Legends timeline, and even though that isn't canon anymore, she was actually just referenced again during Star Wars Fallen Order. If you've been playing that game, they reference Yaddle in passing during it. Someone thinks that she's still alive out there somewhere. But that's it. George Lucas has always refused a lot of questions about Yoda's backstory, where his race comes from, things about his people, like you would normally ask questions about the other races of the galaxy. He's been very meticulous in at least working with other third parties in building out the backstories behind all these cultures in the galaxy. But when it comes to Yoda's species, it's a hard pass. The only time he's ever allowed or given his blessing to creating a new member of the race is during the Mandalorian species. That might be because Dave Filoni is working on the show and he's sort of George Lucas's adoptive son. George Lucas, no joke, thinks of Dave Filoni as the son that he never had because George Lucas only has daughters. But a lot of people are now wondering if this baby Yoda, if he survives the Mandalorian series, which it sounds like he will, if he's going to be the future of the Jedi Order for the next 850 years, which takes it way past the rise of Skywalker. And because of some Easter eggs from episode one on Dr. Pershing's Imperial uniform, there are a lot of theories about who he is and what the Empire's plans for baby Yoda are. So if you missed this during episode one, Dr. Pershing is wearing a white Imperial medical officer's uniform with a special symbol on it that denotes the cloning facility, a Camino from Attack of the Clones, implying that he worked in cloning research for the Emperor. Now, as of right now on the show, the Empire has fallen after the Battle of Endor and the Battle of Jakku. What remained of the Imperial fleet has since gone into the unknown regions and they're in the process of becoming the First Order, so they're nowhere to be found. The Imperials that we see on the Mandalorian are just the leftovers who are vying for power now. The Moffs, the Admirals trying to consolidate what's left of the Empire. The way Werner Herzog's character refers to it, and he's wearing an Imperial medallion, is bring back a sense of order, go back to the way things used to be under Imperial rule. 
We know that the Emperor had all kinds of secret projects all over the galaxy hidden from the rest of the Empire, he was obsessed with immortality, cue the Darth Plagueis the Wise speech, and he was obsessed with knowledge of the Force. That being said, as much contempt as he showed for Master Yoda during Revenge of the Sith, because Yoda's race was so powerful in the Force, Emperor Palpatine tried to learn everything he could to exploit that, or in lieu of that, kill all the other members of his race off that would pop up because they were potential threats to him. If every member of Yoda's race is just as force sensitive as he was and capable of being just as powerful, it's a huge threat to the Empire. When Palpatine seemingly died, which we know now didn't stick because he just showed up in the flesh during the Rise of Skywalker trailer, a lot of these secret projects that the Emperor was working on sort of burst at the dam because he wasn't there to keep them secret anymore. So a lot of people working on those projects or who had knowledge of them tried to exploit them in his absence. Now a lot of people are wondering if Dr. Pershing is either going to try and clone Baby Yoda to make an army of force sensitive beings that the remnants of the Empire are able to use to maintain order, a bunch of evil tiny Yodas running around with lightsabers, or if Baby Yoda himself is a clone of Yoda is part of that attempt. After watching the episodes a couple times, I'm starting to think less that he's an actual clone of Yoda, but that they do want to clone him. And the reason that he's a foundling, just like the Mandalorian, is because he lost his parents. They were killed sometime between the prequels and the original trilogy during the Purge. If he's 50 years old, that makes him about as old as Anakin Skywalker, so Baby Yoda predates the prequels. When the Mandalorian took the job, Dr. Pershing insisted that he be brought back alive, and that probably has something to do with the viability of the cloning process, like living biological matter is easier to clone than dead matter. The reason why Werner Herzog's character is totally cool with him being dead is probably because he either doesn't care about this army of clone Yodas, or he doesn't think they'll be able to control them. There have been a lot of jokes about Yoda maybe getting with Yaddle, but the thing is, is that even though they're male and female members of their species, and they reproduce like normal mammals would with male and female, the reason why I don't think that baby Yoda is actually Yoda's biological child is because Yoda made such a big deal about the tenets of the Jedi Order, and one of the core ones was that they were never allowed to have children, so I think at least Master Yoda would have respected that. Yaddle left the Jedi Council after Phantom Menace. She might still be alive. Like I said, she's mentioned during Star Wars Fallen Order by someone thinking that she's still alive after the Great Purge, after Order 66, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Because of George Lucas keeping them secret, nobody really knows much about their race. Not in real life and not within the Star Wars universe, like the other Jedi Masters and historians don't know much about Yoda's race themselves. Because of their amphibious-like qualities, we know that they come from very swamp-like planets, like Dagobah was the perfect planet for Yoda to hide on. One, because it helped mask his Force signature because it was so strong in the Force, it just sort of drowned his signal out so that the Emperor couldn't find him. But it also served his biological needs for his race, because he needed to live in a swamp-like environment. We know they're extremely long-lived, but because of that, they reproduce very infrequently and there are always very, very few of them in the galaxy at any one time. There's no actual count, even Master Yoda probably doesn't know how many members of his race currently exist. But when they're born, they're all born with relatively high force sensitivity. So if you do want to talk about midichlorians, yes, I mean you can make all the jokes that you want, but they're all born with relatively high counts, just like Master Yoda was. That's why everyone is always so curious about them. The Emperor, the rest of the Imperials, Baby Yoda even tries to heal the Mandalorian with the Force just to give you an idea for how innately Force-sensitive and powerful he is. He's not old enough to speak, but he knows enough about the Force that he knows that he can use it to heal his wound, even though the Mandalorian himself seems like he doesn't know anything about the ways of the Force. Even if he grew up during the Clone Wars, which we know he did because of the flashbacks, my assumption there is that because his parents seemed like they were killed during the Clone Wars and he went into refuge, he became a foundling as part of these Mandalorian clans, that they just didn't spend a lot of time teaching him about Force lore because most of the Jedi got wiped out during the Purge. Him learning about the Force by watching Baby Yoda do crazy WTF things will probably just play out over the rest of the season. And if Baby Yoda is doing stuff like this now at the beginning of the series, think about what they might be saving in terms of big WTF Force moments for the series finale. If you're really excited about what's going on with the series right now, don't worry, they just started filming season two a little while ago. So unless they say something different, I'm assuming the season two episodes will drop next year around the same time. And by that time, most places around the world will have access to Disney Plus. So you won't all have to race around to find the episodes somewhere else every single week when they drop them. My Mandalorian episode three video will post tomorrow after the episode airs. So be sure to watch it however you can watch the episode.
While you wait for that, everyone click here for my Star Wars Mandalorian Episode 2 video and click here for my brand new Rick and Morty Season 4 Episode 3 trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.